So the vast majority of immigrants who come, I mean, the, the, the debate about immigration tends to focus on undocumented immigrants. The vast majority of immigrants who come come legally. Uh, there's only two, well, three ways to do that. You'd be a refugee or an asylee because you're fleeing something and you have to demonstrate that. Um, you can come because an employer sponsors you for a fairly highly specialized position. Or you can come because a close family member sponsors you. That's it. There's no line to get into other than those lines. That's why there's so many undocumented people, because there's no line for them to get into. Right? You can't be someone in wherever and, and decide you're going to be an immigrant to the United States and get in a line somewhere. There is no line, unless you meet those criteria. Um, if you look at what the Trump administration proposed as a price for the DREAM Act, it includes cutting legal immigration in half, which is completely nuts. So, so, so who are those people? Like, who are the people who would not come who are coming now? The only people who can come on a family visa, and the majority of legal immigrant visas are family visas, I, as a US citizen, can petition for my spouse, my kids, my parents, my siblings, period. Period. That's it. Those are the only categories. So if you cut legal immigration in half, it's half as many of those people. Right? You could eliminate the siblings category, which some people want to do, and that still wouldn't get you cutting it in half. So you have to eliminate or create much longer lines for my spouse, my kids, or my parents. That's who we're talking about. These are not random foreign people with no connection to the United States. These are the family members of Americans that we're talking about. So that's why it's, it's, it's our issue. Um, my husband is a, uh, he's from, uh, also South Asian, he's from India. He came in on a sibling visa through his sister who married a US citizen. Uh, the system is slow, it's backlogged. You can wait 20 to 25 years for one of those visas if you're a sibling of a, of a US citizen. Uh, there are definitely ways to fix it, but here's what's really, really interesting. The economic evidence all shows we need way more immigrants. Like the best way to, the, and the shortest route to economic growth is actually expand, expanding who we admit and how many we admit. It's like really clear. There's very little disagreement about this among economists and people who look at the data and think about this. It's abundantly clear. And of course, we're having a very different debate. And right now, it's being driven by the, ex frankly, people who are extremists, who it, I can't believe they're in the White House, but they are, um, who you know, believe that it's kind of a zero sum. If one person comes, that's one less job for an American. And actually, the people who come have the effect of creating jobs for everybody and stimulating the economy. And the countries that are worst off and, or, or, or that are struggling economically, the developed countries that are struggling economically in other parts of the world, are countries that have low immigration. Um, so we're, it turns out we're shooting ourselves in the foot by with the kinds of with the kinds of by not reforming our system and by with the kinds of policy debates that we have, and um, look undocumented immigrants and the way that debate plays out are a proxy for something bigger. It's not just about people who came, who didn't have access to an ability to come under the law. Some of this is a reaction to the fact that we're just changing as a country, right? Where our demographics are shifting. And it turns out that's not a new phenomenon. The United States has been changing as a country forever, right? That's, our, that's who we are. And Ben Franklin, you know, from yes, this town, amen. really, really worried about the Germans. And he was very worried that English was going to lose its primacy because there are so many Germans, right? Mm -hmm. Turns out these are old worries. And the people who worried those worries have always been wrong. And we've always gotten past it, and we are in such a moment now. And you know, our capacity to get past it is in question, but that's up to us. And the, but like one of the most powerful um, advocacy tools we have is the people who stand up and tell their stories. And there's no better example of that than the dreamers, who kind of made it inevitable. Um, like the day will come when that's all behind us. But that's because people were brave enough to stand up and organize. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.